Welcome back everyone to Montgomery County's Engage at Home. Our very special guest today is a return guest, Laurie Rias, who is an officer with Montgomery County Public Police. Laurie comes to us always wanting to remind us of the incredible work that she does with the police, but also what she wants us as citizens to be reminded of. Laurie, welcome and give our viewers a little bit of an update of where you work. So I am, I'm Officer Lori Reyes and I am the unit coordinator of the Montgomery County Police Autism IDD, which is Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities and Alzheimer's and Dementia Unit. So our unit began in 2004 because we were continuing to see, and now we still continue, a, to answer calls for what we call missing at-risk individuals. And I know it could be kind of shocking, but we can have between three and eight, three to eight fines where we locate a missing person in that community a week. So our program began with that, res responding to that, but what we now do since the, since about 2005 and beyond is we provide education to officers, individuals, community members. We provide outreach, empowerment, meaning by empowerment, like giving people a voice to speak on navigating what it's like to have autism or Alzheimer's and dementia, providing a voice. And that empowerment also conveys to our police officers. They have the empower, they're empowered to know how to handle the calls effectively and safely. That we have a follow-up piece that usually entails myself calling a family and saying, we're here for you. What other resources can we provide you either within the county or, or beyond? And then our response piece, that's the final piece. That's feeling confident that when you call 911, you are getting officers that are well-trained, a community that's also aware. So it's that broad approach in, um, in the program. That's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Excellent, thank you. And I think this is the piece that we always want to remind our residents is that the program that Laurie's talking about is both headed by Montgomery County Police and they are there for you. Laurie has spent a lot of time making sure that there's cross-training. So everyone who were those front-facing public safety um, officers, they know how to address the needs of people who have Alzheimer's, dementia, or are on the autism spectrum. So Laurie, you mentioned that call-outs, you get all the time a lot of call-outs for people who have left the home, maybe their loved one knew they were going for a walk, but then time just drags on and they're not, they haven't come home. And then eventually a percentage of those people call 911. Could you give us a little bit more detail about what you want residents to do? Yeah, so Lily, thanks for asking. The, the most important the most important safety message that I want to convey, and, and, and back up a little, even more than the, the initial is to tell you that your law enforcement, your police officers are well trained. So as I give you this safety advice, I want you to know that your officers are understanding. Most times are empathetic. We have our own family members that we're caring for. So when you call 911, which is what we're going to talk about, when you call, I want you to know that your officers are trained and they will provide you with not only an immediate response, but that follow-up piece. So now let's get to that calling 911. We have seen, I've seen over the course of running this program for 16 years, that there are times when with, there's a challenge in getting individuals, getting families to call 911. And not just families, just caregivers in general, not calling 911 for a multitude of reasons. Maybe they're embarrassed or maybe they're worried they're going to get in trouble with their employer for, because their loved one, the person they're caring for, has wandered. 
So we need to get beyond that. It is okay to call 911 if your loved one is missing. And like Lily was saying, you're thinking, wow, are they missing if they've gone for a walk and they're gone two hours? Like, when do I call? When you're feeling that uneasiness, call. And we, we, we want folks to take walks. You know, we want that independence as long as possible. And this is why we say we're here for you. If you get that uneasy feeling and your loved one is, is missing or they've gone for a walk and it's too long or they've, you've woken up at two in the morning and your loved one is missing, the first thing you should be doing is calling 911, letting us know so that you're not alone We'll take some of that burden from you. We'll help you look. So first and foremost, the main safety piece I wanted to convey today is calling 911. There's, there's a certain perception that you can only call when it's, you know, we always say your house is on fire. Of course, call then. But this is also an emergency. So we want to kind of take away that, that um, you know, inhibition of, of, work, of calling 911. Exactly. And I think the piece that we want folk to know is that when you call 911, then you are able to have all active duty officers who are out on the road keeping an eye open. And I know from a fact that oftentimes officers who are taking a break or who are in different areas they keep their eyes open and they start to plan. And this is the piece that we really need to talk about, that when one person who's the caregiver goes out trying to look for their loved one, they really don't know a planned approach. It's better for them to stay at home because their loved one may actually return on their own fruition. But when you're putting it in the hands of your team, it's a planned approach. You actually know how to evaluate how long the person may have gone for and where to start looking. Do you want to explain that a little bit further? Yeah, so we're very lucky here in Montgomery County for many reasons. <laughs> I'm a Montgomery County girl, so I guess I'm, I'm biased in my love for this county, but especially as it relates to our police department, First and foremost, I'll say it again, the officers truly care. And like I said, many are in the same boat that the person calling is in, you know, caring for their, for their parents or the loved one. So when you call, you're also getting that educated police force, but you are getting, like Lily said, every officer that's currently working, they get the lookout. Then we are fortunate that we utilize what's called our managed search and rescue team. So if the call kind of goes on for any extended period of time, they call our search manager, which are also police officers. And they, I mean, it, it, is, it is miraculous the way they are able to locate individuals because like Lily said, they utilize all those years of experience in locating missing persons from, you know, contacting bus systems, taxi, utilizing social media, if, if need be, usually it does, I don't want to scare anybody, usually it doesn't get that far, but at least you know that you have that type of robust response, and there is nothing to be embarrassed if you need to use that response, that's what we're here for. Exactly. So we're getting near the end of our time together and I wanted to make sure that we had time to talk about education because this is a piece that you, you spend a lot of time, you and your colleagues spend a lot of time actually going into the community and educating people on some preventative measures, some things that they can do if maybe their loved one has started to um, leave the home un unplanned for. Do you want to just give a little bit of an overview of what some of those sure. strategies are? So thank you, and I'll keep it short and sweet. So first and foremost, always know you can call 911. Second, 
what is a is to maybe let your neighbors know if you feel comfortable make them aware that you loved your loved one of course but maybe they could wander they can keep an eye out we have a neighbor letter on our website very important is if your loved one will tolerate it the use of an identification bracelet i prefer i like the road id.com road id.com style because it can be cut to fit you do not have to put a diagnosis on the id bracelet you can simply um we, you can simply get a put a first name and the cell phone numbers of family members that will answer the phone should we locate your loved one before you realize they're missing and the last piece is when you call 911 take a deep breath make sure you relay that information that your loved one has dementia has alzheimer's any of those conditions so that we and then any other information that might be important i know calling 911 can make all of us pitter patter in our hearts but just be calm as calm as you can take a deep breath so that's kind of the the main uh safety uh measures that we encourage very much so and I worked with Laurie on the county's Dementia Friendly America initiative, and I was very impressed with how uh, Laurie and her team identified that our uh, very well known file of life could be improved and they developed a dementia friendly card that goes with the file of life. And if you're interested in receiving um, that information, do let us know and we can get that to you. A um, couple of things that were on that, and it's probably good for everyone to remember that if, if there is a chance that someone does go wandering, it's always great to have a recent photo, a bit of an idea of, you know, how tall are they, what colour is their hair, what colour are their eyes, their weight, and maybe some of the places that they like to go to. You know, one of the things that we all do when we go for a walk is go to favourite places and that always helps officers when they're when they're looking for folk if they do have a couple of spots where they're familiar with and maybe are their um, go to places. So before we go, Laurie, is there anything else? We've gone through a lot of information. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers? Um, you know, I think I think we covered it all, and and I just want to say countless times in recent months i mean all we've kind of all we've been through that the officers have sent me emails or phone calls to say lori i located this guy and i can't you really need to reach out to the family so officers not only reach out to me because that's what they're supposed to do but they reach out to me because they're excited to help a family that they've returned home or that they've found. So I just wanted to share that because our officers truly go, I mean, sometimes we're the first line of defense and we truly, I've seen them go above and beyond for, for families in the community, for all families in the community. Hmm. Well, Laurie, thanks once again. You know, I think the piece that you've said, um, and I know, you know very closely with working with the county is that, we are very fortunate to have a police force that has the unit that you head and that we know that this, as you will often say to me, it's a layered approach. You know, part of the layer is the community. The other layer is the police. The further layer is our community partners. And we want our residents to feel comfortable to know that highly trained police are there for them and they do such incredible work and they have helped so many families. And whether it's a um, child or an adult, um, the police are there. So Laurie, I wanna thank you once again for being here and for joining you, us Lily. for this interview. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. This has been Engage at Home. I wanna thank everyone for being part of this interview. And I remind our viewers to stay calm.